So did you maybe multiply that top equation by 3? Yeah. Okay, so that gave you 6x minus 9y equals 15. And then negative 6x plus 9y equals negative 15. Yes, indeed. Because you get 0 equals 0, everything cancels. And so that would be the same one. Yep. Sure enough. Remember, you have, like, I call this a normal problem where you get a normal answer. You have two weird situations. Something like this, and then something like this. This one means they're the same one. What does this one mean? Parallel. Parallel one. Yep. Otherwise, you're going to get an answer like that. Good. Anybody else? Oh, I said our note sheet's out. We're going to do some vocab today. Have you guys, I should know this, but I don't. Have you spent any time with matrices? So you're kind of familiar with the general concept? TJ, get your note sheets out. All right, well, let me, let me, all right, we're on our note sheets backside, vocabulary, everybody ready? Oh, screw it up there is matrix. I want you to write the definition. Rectangular array of numbers. Arranged in rows and columns. Everybody's going to write the definition. It's a rectangle and it has rows and columns. The dimensions of the matrix, sometimes referred to as order, are rows by columns. We say rows by columns. In the same way that if I said, what are the dimensions of this room? You might say 20 by 50. What are the dimensions of this matrix? Two by three. Rows, columns. So this is your definition, rows by columns. Please don't say times, that's by, rows by columns. And for this specific example, matrix A is a two by three. If you happen to have the same number of rows as columns, you're square. 
So if you had two rows and two columns, two by two, square. Three by three, four by four. That's what it means to be square. Same number of rows as columns. So two by two, three by three. In matrix land, squares are the most special. We love squares. This one is not square because it has two rows and three columns. Everybody with me still? Entries or elements. Those are the numbers inside the matrix. So this matrix, my example matrix, has how many entries? Six. Six. And if I wanted to identify these guys, let's say I wanted to talk about this guy. Here's how I would talk about it. I'd use a little a to tell me I'm inside matrix A. And I would put a little subscript on it. One, two. That one, two stands for first row, second column. So if I saw this, what would that stand for? Second row, first column, so that would be negative one. The A tells me to look in matrix A. This tells me which row to look at and which column to look at. Everything is row first. The row number is first. When you do your dimensions, the row number is first. How many rows? A scale. That is just a fancy math word. And those of you in physics have heard that word before. Anybody here in physics? You've heard scalars? Talk about scalars? A scalar is just a constant. It's just a coefficient. So if I went back to my example matrix, I'm going to have to start erasing some of this. If I went back to my example matrix, This two would be a scalar. And guess what that two is going to do to the entries in matrix A? Multiply it by two. So that would be four, eight, zero, negative two, ten, six. That's called a scalar. It's just a coefficient. Fancy word. Equal matrices. Two things. They have to have the same dimension and what does that mean again same dimensions that means they have to both be two by three or five by eight or something they have to both be the same size and they have to have the same corresponding entries so that means 
if I told you that these two matrices were equal, you would automatically know that A was the same as P. Corresponding entry, same place. vocabulary? Right, let's see if you get it. Let's do some problems. Uh, number one, A. What are the dimensions of matrix A? How many rows? How many columns? So the dimensions are two by two. And you write two by two. That's how we write it, two by two. How about B? Two by three. Two rows, look at my hands. Two rows, three columns. Two by three. A sub two one. Look at matrix A. Second row, first column, did everybody say three? How about B sub one, two? First row, second column, did you say zero? C sub three, one. Can't do it. That's a tricky problem. This is where it's getting wild and wacky. In order to have a three, one, you got to have a row three, right? And we don't. So far, so good on this stuff. All right, because now we're going to start with the operations. C says, let's add A plus B. Now, I'm going to tell you, you cannot do that. Does anybody have an idea about why you can't add them, Hannah? They're not the same dimension. If you are going to add matrices, they have to be the same size. We don't care what size they are, but they have to match. A and B do not match. Therefore, they are not addable. What about A and C? A and C do match. So we can add them. Here we go. One and negative one would be zero. Everybody see how I did that? Uh, two and one would make three and four. How does that look for the answer? I already talked about kind of 2A, so I think we can do that one real quick. What does 2A look like? This is problem E. What does 2A look like? 2, 4, 2. Scalar multiplication is easy. You just take everything times 2 or whatever the number is. In this case, it's 2. Got it? Uh-oh, F is a little more complicated. All right, so what do you think we need to do first? Both two and three. All right, so let's get that done. So two C would be negative two, two, eight, zero. And we're going to subtract A. Now, can we even do that? Yeah. 
because these are the same size, same dimensions. Very good. All right, now you are subtracting though. So negative two minus one. Negative three. Two minus two. Eight minus three. Zero minus negative four. PJ. All right, everybody good on that one? Tell me about G. Can't do it. And why can't we do it? Because they don't match. They're not the same size. They do not have the same dimension. So you're going to say for G, you're going to say no solution. Is everybody good on that? Yes. Moses, you paying attention to these? multiplication now. This is a little bit tricky. The rule for multiplication is different than addition. So I'm going to make, I'm going to write down uh, matrix A, which I'm going to come over here and get. That's A. And then F Okay. Now I'm going to multiply these. When you do a multiplication problem, the first thing I want you to do is write down the dimensions of each matrix. So this one is 2 by 2. And this one is 2 by 2. Now here's the rule for multiplication. If you're going to multiply these two, the middle two have to match. So if we had an 8 by 3 and a 3 by 5, they can be multiplied. The outside two tell you the size of the answer. So these two must match, they do. And when I multiply, my answer is going to be another two by two. In this example, an eight by three and a three by five, they can multiply and my answer would be eight by five. Do you remember doing something You probably did last year. Now, you have determined that you're going to have two rows and two columns. Two by two is my answer. So you have four numbers you got to find. This number is in the first row, first column. Would you agree with me? Yeah. So I want you to draw a circle around the first row and the first column. You are finding this number right here, which is in row one, column one. Remember, always rows first. Rows first. 
everything we do, dimensions, everything, it goes first. So I'm going to draw a circle around row one and column one. Now I am going to multiply, because remember, this is a multiplication problem. The first number here times the first number here. And then I'm going to multiply the second number times the second number. And then I'm going to add them together. So what do I get? I get a negative 1 and a 6. And when I add them together, I get, and that's what goes in that spot. Is that what you did last year, Taylor? Do you remember that now? So we're taking the first number times the first number, the second number times the second number, and we are adding them together. We skipped chapter six, because that's called the vector dot product, and you would have learned how to do that in vectors. Now we're just doing it in matrices. So we're taking the first times the first, and the second times the second, and we're adding them up. Now, how do you think I'm gonna fill this blank? Well, which row am I going to use? Uh -uh. Which row is that in? I'm using the first row, but now I'm going to use the second column. So I'm going to take 1 times 5, 2 times 0, and add them up. What do I get? 1 times 5, 2 times 0. I get five. Now that's coincidence. Please don't think those are always going to match. It just happens. Now I'm going to fill this blank. All right, where is it? Row two, column one. So row two, column one. First times first. Second times second, add them up. What do we get? Negative 3, negative 12, negative 15. If you need to write that down over to the side, negative 3, negative 12, that's fine. First times first, second times second. And then add. See if you can fill that one in for me. You already have it, Lexi? Yep, same thing. I know there's a lot of matching numbers in there. Please don't think that happens. I'm not sure why it happened. It's just coincidence. Please don't, don't think anything of it. Anybody have a question about where that 15 came from? First times first, we're in second row, second column. Second row, second column. First times first, second times first. Well, some of you are yawning. You must think this is so easy. I hope you do. Let's look at B. B says multiply the same two matrices, but in the other order. Great question. Taylor says, this is Ford, multiplication is normally commutative. Two times three is three times two. I wonder if it works for matrices. She said, well, I get the same answer. I don't know. Let's check and see. Let's go through our rules. Make sure we remember how to do this. Jennifer? Well, two by two and two by two. So the first thing I do is check to make sure I can multiply. And I can. And then what do these two numbers tell me, the ones not in the box? That's my answer, two by two. Okay, so now, Jennifer, you're going to help me find that number. So you're going to take this row and this column. So 
Actually, positive 14, because it's negative 1 and positive 15. You good with that? Uh-oh, Taylor. Uh-oh. Already we see what? They aren't the same, are they? Normal multiplication is commutative, but matrix multiplication is not. All right, let's finish it up. All right, stand blind check. Row one, column two. Here we go. Row one, column two. What number is going to go right there? Row one, column two. Perfect. I'm going to find this number right here. This number is in which row? Uh, it's the second row, and we're going to the first column. So that's 3 plus 0, 3. Very good. Everybody see that? He did that kind of quick. 3, 0. Go find the last one for me. Let's see if we can all match. Second row, second column. What do you get for that last spot? Six. Six and zero. How's it using row one again? This one? Okay, it's in row two, column one. Alright. Three times one. Zero times three. Turn them out. All right. Try C on your own. Now remember how you start. What do you do first? Always, what do you check first? Your dimensions. What are the dimensions of D? Two by two. Two by two. What are the dimensions of E? Whoa, 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 whoa. Can this problem even be done? No. No, that's an empty check. Move on. Right? Do not start doing anything until you have checked this. All right, what about D? Is it possible? the dimensions of D? 2 by 2? And 2 by 3? Is it possible? Now this time though, your answer is going to have 2 rows and 3 columns. So this time you got 6 numbers you gotta find. Alright? Start finding them. Remember, it's rows, columns. These two must match. And then the outside numbers, the ones not in the box, are the size of the answer.
it's so easy to make mistakes with this. Pan a match. I probably don't have any mistakes, but it's possible. So let's talk about anything you're not sure about. in the second row, first column. So I'm going to take three times one and negative two times negative three. Oh. So that would be a three and that would be a positive six and I add them together. A lot of signs you have to keep track of for sure. on this one. On, uh, I don't know which one that is. So this is letter D. Anybody have any questions about letter D? We're good? Alright. Are you working on E? This one's two by three, two by three. This one's three by three. Is it a doable problem? And the answer will be two by three. Two rows, three columns. Now to fill that spot, We have to multiply the first row times the first column. This is a lot to keep track of. We need to take one times one, two times one, and three times negative one. And then we have to add them up. Did you get zero? Yeah, zero. <coughs> Lot to keep track of. Write it down if you need to, want to. That's fine. Now, how are we going to get this number? First row, second column. First row, second column. And we do the same thing. If you can fill in the rest of these, you already got done, Ashley? Yeah. Show me what you got. What'd you put here? 18, negative 2, um, negative 1, and 3. Okay. Anybody match that? I think my circular row second column might be hard. This 
second column. All right, let's do second row, second column. So that would be negative three times negative one, one times two, and zero times one. X three plus two, that would be five. She gets the rest of them all right. What do the rest of them say? Julian's nodding. Jennifer, do you get these? Harry? All right, who has a question about one of those? I know we're just about out of time. Tonight, you're going to have the opportunity to practice a little bit. This is, on, this is in Schoology, so you don't need to write it down unless you want to. Oh, well. I don't know why I have such a hard time remembering to turn it off.